Hello and welcome to Applause Performances, IdeaStream Arts' monthly online spotlight for musicians living and creating in Northeast Ohio. I'm IdeaStream's David C. Barnett. From Dave Brubeck to Sonny Rollins, Oberlin College has had an ear for jazz music since the early 50s. Today, it's home to a world-renowned jazz studies program led by Cleveland guitarist Bobby Ferrazza, who's taught at the Oberlin Conservatory of Music for more than three decades. Bobby and his conservatory colleagues attract some of the finest young musicians in the country to Oberlin, and they've soldiered through this pandemic with grace and talent. A select few join the Oberlin Sonny Rollins Jazz Ensemble, which Bobby leads as director. Today, we shine the applause performances spotlight on Bobby Ferrazza and his students from the Oberlin Conservatory Jazz Studies Program. Now, I'm here in the KeyBank studio at the Idea Center, and joining us from the Oberlin College campus are today's musical guests. First of all, Bobby Ferrazza. Bobby, thanks for joining us today. Oh, it's great to be here, Dave. Thanks so much. And also with us are a couple of Oberlin Conservatory students. We have Alejandra Williams-Maneri, who's a piano-playing senior, and singing sophomore Christopher McDowell. Good for you two to be on. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for having us. Guy and gal, I should say, probably. And we thank you out there watching us live on Facebook Live. We thank you for joining us today. And we'd like to hear from you. Uh, you can do that in the comments section, on the Facebook comments section. Let us know where you're watching from. And if you have any questions or comments along the way, if only to say, hey, I love what I'm seeing. So let us, let us hear from you. Let's, let's know what's going on. Uh, Bobby, you've taught at the Oberlin Conservatory for more than 30 years. How have you seen the school grow and change over that time? It's been an incredible growth over that time. In 1988, we started uh, the jazz program um, for, for a as a degree program. And that's when I started. I was hired by Wendell Logan, mm -hmm. and I was proud to be here. And um, at that time, it was a very, very small program. You can imagine we didn't have any ma majors, and now we have sometimes upward of 80 majors. So jazz majors, that is. So the program has grown incredibly, and it's also grown in terms of the the support for the music here. And um, it's it's really just, now we have this new building for the last 10 or 11 years, and it's it's really an incredible thing. So so that so that's the wide span of these, you know, three decades. But now let's narrow and focus down just to the past year. How challenging has it been uh, teaching and maintaining through this, working through this uh, pandemic? It's, it really has been a, a big challenge, and, you know, I don't think we have enough time to go over yeah, all the I things that we've had to change in order to, uh, to actually keep our school running. And yeah. I, I really appreciate the work that the school did, the vision that the school had to create a set of protocols that allowed us to bring students back and have in-person lessons and in-person ensembles that's, that helps us all. And uh, I think that now we're, we're almost through this, this entire school scholastic year, at least the first two semesters. And, and I can finally feel okay about saying that we're going to make it. I'm sure we're going to make it. And um, I, I, I really I appreciate all the, the, the things that people have done. You know, the, the kids have been great about um, taking on uh, um, the discipline to to be to wear a mask everywhere mm -hmm. and and pay attention to all the things that we've all heard about now for a year distancing and those sort of safety precautions so it, it has been a big challenge but it, it's been very gratifying to to be able to do it Alejandra what's well, from a student's perspective what's it been like uh, and how has playing music helped you get through these times yeah that's a great question um, I think for me, the main thing about playing music in general is is community and connecting with others. And so in this time where we're so much more isolated than we normally are, um, music, you know, fulfills that even more to an even deeper level. Um, even when we're like six feet or more than six feet away from each other in an ensemble room, there's still this feeling of connection and, and um, intimacy that I think is really hard to come by nowadays because we're still... Um, collaborating with each other, we're taking risks in the music, we're supporting each other as we take those risks. So 
um, it's really been the thing to keep me not just sane, but, you know, motivated and inspired. Um, so it's been huge. What about for, for you, Christopher, as a singer, uh, it must be a challenge to find a place to to perform or even to, to rehearse. Yeah, it, it's been difficult, but Oberlin's made a lot of strides to make that happen. Um, for example, for the Sonny Rollins Ensemble group that I'm in, um, to rehearse, I have my own isolation booth. So it's a lot like if you're in a recording studio, they have you all by yourself with the door locked and they have all the wires and everything in there so that people on the outside or the other room could still hear me and we could still make music. So you're kind of connected electronically, at least, and you're so close, but so far, you know, that's weird, isn't it? <laughs> They're right on the other side of the glass. Well, we're we're going to take a look at, at what that's like for 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 Christopher and Alejandra uh, with with a piece of music. It's uh, composed by Bobby. It's performed by Alejandra and Christopher, along with other members of the Oberlin uh, Sonny Rollins Jazz Ensemble. First, Bobby, before we play, uh, tell us about the inspiration for this tune. It's called Mascanti. Mascanti is um, the word for musician, I believe, in in one of the South African languages, of which I. Forgive me, I don't know which one. There are 11, okay. I believe. And it was a story that uh, my, my good friend Gilbert in South Africa told me uh, about how when he was a kid, he wanted to, he made his own guitar and he started playing. And his, his, he worked on a farm and his dad thought, oh, now he's going to be one of the Mascanti and, and not be responsible. And <laughs> he told a very funny story about it. So I always <laughs> remembered that and had to write a tune with that title. Let's let's take a listen to it. It's the Oberlin Sonny Rollins Jazz Ensemble with Bobby Ferrazza's Muscanti today on Applause Performances.
And that was the Oberlin Sonny Rollins Jazz Ensemble, which includes two of our guests today, singer Christopher McDowell scatting away there in the booth all by himself, just, you know, in there singing along. And Alejandra williams Maneri on the keyboards there saw mostly your back, but we got we got what you're doing and the, the groove that you were setting down there. They were performing Mascanti, composed by our other guest today, Bobby Ferrazza, director of Oberlin's Jazz Studies Program. We thank the Oberlin Conservatory of Music for that footage. Bobby, can you tell us, we know these two were in it, but who else was, was playing in there? So on trumpet, we have Kurtan Harrison and on alto saxophone, Nick Beltramini. And of course we have Chris and Alejandra, as you pointed out, and we have Benjamin Bird on guitar. And we have two bass players, Eitan Schillinger Hyman and Ian Ashby. And then on drums, we have Jeremy McCabe. Bunch of, bunch of talented young people coming up, the future of, of music, maybe. Well, applause performances, this, you know, music is what we're all about here in Applause Performances. We come to you every second Friday of each month. So once a month, we come here with jazz sometimes, we come here with folk sometimes, we've done R&B, we've done rock and roll, done every kind of music. We've done classical over uh, Christmas. And you can find out what we've done in the past and also what's coming up in the future uh, by checking out our following us on Twitter or Facebook, follow IdeaStream Arts, okay? And speaking of Facebook, if you have any comments right now about what you're seeing, uh, write them in the comment section and uh, even throw in some questions if you have. We've, we've gotten some. Heather Harrington, Bob, says, Hi, Bob, watching from Collinwood, can see your old house, miss you, great to see you. <laughs> then we've got fantastic. David Finke. Uh, we're, we're watching from the corner of South Professor and Vine in Oberlin about a block from this fine performance space. We're happy to be NPR supporters, we, and we certainly appreciate that, public radio supporters. And uh, thanks, thanks, you know. So people are watching, people are loving it, and uh, we appreciate that. Bobby, I've got a question for you. Uh, Sonny Rollins, a major name in the jazz world. Uh, how did it come to be that he decided to lend his name to the Oberlin Ensemble? It's a pretty long story, but to get right to it, okay. um, James McBride, who's one of our, we're proud to have him as an alum, uh, he was very instrumental in uh, pointing out Oberlin to Sonny, first through a friend and then through some direct conversations. And then we started to discuss how we might um, work together over the course of quite a few months, actually. So it was quite a long process. One of the things that Sonny, I think, was taken with in terms of Oberlin was uh, the fact that Will Marion Cook was an African-American that uh, studied here in, 18, in the 1870s mm. with, at, on violin, but he became a, a composer as well and was one of Duke Ellington's mentors. And Sonny was aware of him and that he studied here. So Oberlin's got a long legacy that uh, I, I think a lot of folks um, are aware of. And a lot that the people aren't aware of, I'll, I'll bet, as well. And, and you talk about James McBride. He's right up to the minute. He just won uh, earlier this week the Annisfield Wolf Book Award for his new fiction book. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of great stuff going on. Alejandra, uh, I, I hear you and the rest of the ensemble actually got to meet and speak with Sonny Rollins. What was, what was that like? What, 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 did, what left an impression from that meeting for you? Yeah, that was really powerful. I actually, when I was walking away afterwards to my apartment, I was like tearing up because I don't know, me personally, I've never had the experience of talking to an elder of this music, mm -hmm. um, not to mention someone who's you know so influential and so important to the genre. So it was really impactful. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think anyone at that meeting can say that one of the largest takeaways is, is his philosophy about just be a good person, you know, and, and if you want to get good at music, be a good person. If you want to change the world, be a good person. Um, it, it was kind of beautiful. Like we all asked him these different questions and he gave specific and really wonderful answers. And also to each question, the takeaway was like, just be a good person. You know, he, he was able to apply that to everything. It was that, really nice. That's like advice for life, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. But what about for you, Chris? What was it like to meet and speak to the man himself? It was pretty amazing, you know, with our music in particular. Um, 
It, it's kind of like having Bach call you on the cell phone. Wow, and you gave him yeah. Questions like that. I thought it was really phenomenal that one of the masters of the music, a great American composer, a great his musical mind and master of the music. I Bobby, uh, I think though many people know of the Oberlin Conservatory, they may not know about the kind of the mission that, that you guys have. And COVID this year has made it much harder to fulfill that mission. Talk about the mission and, and what how COVID has made things difficult. Um, you referring to the mission of, of our group, the Sonny Rollins group, or mm -hmm. the, the conservatory um, writ large, so to speak? The, the ensemble, I would say specifically. Yeah, the... The idea behind the ensemble was always to uh, get across to, this was something that, that Sonny Rollins was very intent on, is just to get across as, as um, our students here, Chris and Alejandra, have pointed out that Sonny wanted them to know that um, through his life, the, the most important thing that he wanted to get across to young musicians was this idea of helping others. So through helping others, we, we become stronger and, and um, and better musicians even. And so through that, we constructed ways to engage in community service with the group. And we've done that now. This is the third year of the group. And we've done that with all of our groups in the past. And this year, we're, you're exactly right. We're, we're not able to go and face-to-face -face do community service. Um, so that's, that's impacted what, we're, what we've been traditionally able to do. But um, Sonny, talk to the students and I think that the students were as 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 they've mentioned here they they were very much impacted by that so even just hearing his words saying those things um, I, I think that they're they know what what they should do we, we heard from uh, somebody who's from Oberlin uh, Kathy uh, Hazelton talks about living in South Euclid for 20 years and now I'm a person at, at Kendall at Oberlin and enjoying the performance looking forward to returning to in-person concerts and as, as I imagine we all are at this point let's let's well, let's keep the music going let's get to another performance by the ensemble tell us about this song it's called miles ahead and it's by one of the other students in the ensemble Bobby tell us more yeah, this is Kurtan Harrison's great piece, and um, he's a jazz composition major. And I believe, I hope I'm not misstating this, but I, I think he's maybe a double major, trumpet and, um, and jazz composition. And he wrote this piece, and we were all happy to play it. This is the Oberlin Sonny Rollins Jazz Ensemble with Miles Away by Kurtan Harrison. Let's take a listen.
That was Curtin Harrison's Miles Away, performed by the Oberlin Sonny Rollins Jazz Ensemble. You, you heard Curtin there on trumpet. That was pre-recorded. That segment was pre-recorded, done at Oberlin. We thank the conservatory for doing that. I'm Idea Stream's David C. Barnett, and I'm here with two members of that student ensemble, two of the people that you saw playing away there, Alejandra williams Maneri and Christopher McDowell. Also with us is the director of Oberlin's Conservatory Jazz Studies Program, Bobby Ferrazza. Uh, Bobby, let's go a little bit back into the past. You said that jazz was a mystery to you when you were just getting started. How has it now become a part of your life? So tell, take us back then. Why was it a mystery, and then how did it become really important to you? Well, I said mystery. I think that that was uh, describing my first lesson with Bill Durango, who oh, was... Bill, okay. Yeah, was obviously a, a jazz legend, not just in Cleveland, but it's funny because, you know, one of the first conversations I ever had with Sonny Rollins, he asked me about Bill Durango, and... We, he, kn he knew of Bill. He was older than, than Sonny. And so he was quite a legend. And um, I, I went over, I called up Bill one day. I was 15 years old, I think, or maybe 16. Just started playing guitar, and I called him up, and he answered the phone. And yes. <laughs> I said, can I take a lesson? And he said, yeah, come over. And went over his house, and he played Miles Davis for me on a recording. All the lessons were in his basement, and... It was, I had been listening to a lot of blues music and that led me to jazz. And when I first heard Miles Davis playing with Coltrane, I didn't understand that music. It was, it was, it was on a whole nother level. And so that's why I said mystery. You know, I was uh, 16 years old and, and that music was very new to me. So I was absolutely fascinated and I studied with Bill for a number of years and and then um, since then it's you know it's just it's been my life. It's been my life's work, there's no question. Alejandro, you talk about, you know, legends speaking to an elder, Bill Durango was like is epic. He was epic. You know, he he goes all the way back to the the originators, way back in the bebop era and stuff, and out of the forties. And he was very cool. He was one of the first, uh, one of my first musician interviews at the time. So amazing person. Now, from but from your case, Alejandra, um, your parents were instrumental in getting you into playing piano. How did you make your way to jazz from there? Yeah. So I kind of give this one to my dad um, because he grew up listening to jazz and you know took jazz saxophone lessons and always had a love for the music. Um, and at the time I was like in third grade and at that age, kind of reluctant to, <laughs> to try new things and go out of my comfort zone. So he had to convince me a little bit. Um, and I was taking classical lessons at the time and being right-handed, the left hand in classical music always just gave me a lot of trouble like getting the dexterity going for the single noted lines and, you know, the, the, um, being able to play quickly. And so that was always like frustrating to me. And so my dad was like, well, Alejandra, you know, when you play jazz, you don't have to do that in your left hand because you're playing chords, <laughs> um, which is like a generalization, of course. But I thought to myself, great, if I don't have to struggle with that <laughs> It's <stuff."> easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sign me up. But um, yeah, and then I, I started studying with this wonderful teacher named Dick Odgren, who's based in Auburn, Massachusetts. Um, and I studied with him through high school. Really, really fantastic teacher. Um, so that started it for me. And I think the, the other part of it was going to jazz camp when I was younger. I went to the Litchfield Jazz Camp in Connecticut. And that was the first time I ever played music with other people and ever played improvised music with other people. Um, that was, that's kind of what sold it for me, that experience. Uh, Christopher, what about for you? I understand it was a movie that you saw as a kid that it kind of got you into playing music. Tell, tell us that story. Yeah, I got you. So it was about fourth grade, I think. Um, Disney just came out with The Princess and the Frog. Okay. And then we know in that movie there's a whole bunch of jazz music because they're set in New Orleans, and there's a trumpet playing alligator. So that got me interested in picking up music. So I started playing the trumpet in sixth grade. From there, I learned to play more and more instruments. And, and, and your, your singing career almost be, became as part of an accident? What, what was that? Yeah, it's a happy accident. Okay. <laughs> so I was playing in the pit orchestra as a percussionist for one of the plays we were doing at my high school, Osceola County School for the Arts, 
um, we were playing Into the Woods. Um, mm -hmm. One of the actors that day, they felt sick, so they didn't show up to the rehearsal. So being me, I knew the music already. I, I try to know it better than the actors. Good. So uh, I asked the MD or the music director, could I just try singing one of the tunes? And then he said, yeah, go ahead. I started singing. People were nodding their heads. They started enjoying it. And then the jazz director walked through the hall and then he's with one of the two, two of the top students in the jazz program. They, they hear me and they go, just looking at each other, turning their head. And then they oh, ask, hey, will you sing in the jazz band with us? Yeah. So that happened. Talk, talking about the, the influence of, of you know, teachers and, and that sort of thing, uh, a young lady named Evelyn Wright has written in, and she says, under the tutelage of Bobby, I know the students are in good hands. Play on, she says. Bobby, let's turn the focus on to you right now. We've been hearing, we've, we've heard these two folks playing, but let's, let's hear from you. Uh, you have something that you can play for us live. Tell us a story behind it. Oh, this is a tune that I wrote, um, oh, probably about 12 years ago, and it's something that we recorded on um, a record with the jazz faculty, the Oberlin Jazz Faculty. It's called Beauty Surround Us. Beauty Surrounds Us. And I just want to say, shout out to Evelyn, who's my, my sister. Mm. And one of my great joys in life has been to play with Evelyn whenever I can. So, so there you go. Let's, let's take a listen. guitarist Bobby Ferrazza playing his composition, Beauty Surrounds Us. Emphasis on beauty. Beautifully done there, Bobby. We heard Thank it you. live here on Applause Performances. You know, recently, bringing this way up to date, uh, this, earlier this week, the governor uh, announced that outdoor performances are now possible. Um, are there any plans for the Sonny Rollins uh, uh, Ensemble to play outside somewhere? Yes, I'm sure that we'll play outside in the next couple of weeks, although students don't know it yet. <laughs> but oh, yes. You yeah, heard we, it here first. Yeah, yeah, we will. Uh, we've, got, we've got a note from uh, uh, one of your uh, colleagues, uh, Carl Offen, and he's, he's doing it, it's, let me see if I don't butcher this, en hora buena ale, something like that. Did I get that right? 
there's <laughs> there's the message. <laughs> there's a message from Carl. Um, we He's thank my you. Advisor. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we we thank you all for for joining us today. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Alejandro and Christopher, for being part of our live webcast today. Thank you guys so much for playing and and being here and talking. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. We're so happy to put a little spotlight on the Sunny Group. I love it. Absolutely. We all, we all, and we love you being here. Our guests have been Bobby Ferrazza, Director of Jazz Studies Program at the Oberlin Conservatory of Music, and his students, Alejandra williams Maneri and Christopher McDowell. We thank our friends at the Oberlin Conservatory of Music, uh, Kathy Strauss, Paul Akis, Andrew Tripp, and Jacob Strauss. And may I say that over my shoulder here is a piano from courtesy of the conservatory. They, they, they just have it for us to use whenever we have live musicians playing, which we hope to do sometime in the near future. So we thanks for that. And we thank our Idea Stream team here, Jean-Marie Papoy and Al Dalhausen, Joe Sheppa, Kevin Anderson, and Mike Vendelin. Carrie Wise is managing producer of arts and culture. And Applause Performances is produced by David Diorio. Join us next month Friday, May 14th, live at noon, as we welcome a different sort of jazzist, Brazilian musician Moises Borges with drummer, percussionist Dylan Moffat. I'm Idea Streams' David C. Barnett, thanking you for joining us today. We'll catch you next month on Applause Performances.